Sebastian Bourdais. So the Peugeot is the car that is tested and tried both that Sebring at Le Mans, but it's in the garage for the start of the race. What happened and will it make it? Well, we've got a night early issue, so uh, they changed the front. Barnbacher Lowell's came into the American Le Mans series on a mission in 2008, but it got off to a very rough start at Sebring. Did not finish, but Dirk, you come back in 2009, you put your brand new car on pole. What kind of advantage will that give you over the course of a 12-hour race? Well, David Brabham also brought his Acura into pit lane. The team is having radio communication issues. They knew that they needed fuel. They could tell that from the telemetry, but they did not know about tires. David pulled it in, shook his head no, but then he also didn't have a crew member telling him when it was time to go. So this team's already having struggles early in the race. Very frustrating when your radio doesn't work. And one thing that Alan McNish just said, that team does have a lot of experience, but the R15 is a brand new car, as is the Acura that they're up against. But Nick Manassi, and that's one advantage that you guys do have. This Peugeot 908, it has some experience, but here at Sebring, not always reliable. Do you think the car is more durable this year? I think last year we came here, we was really... Andretti Green Racing has struggled to be competitive in the early part of the season, but now moving into the second half on pole, Franck Montigny, your third race with your third different co-driver. How important is... No, Simon, a tremendous stint for you behind the wheel of your Acura. After the heartbreak last week, how rewarding is it to come back and lead? Yen Magnuson, Johnny O'Connell clinching the GT1 championship, eighth win of the season, but this is your final Petit Le Mans GT1. Is it a little bittersweet? You guys talk about the debris being picked up at this late point in the race. It's a ball of rubber that came out of the GT2 Aston Martin. These are the kinds of things that get caught up. This causes the cars to overheat. The radiators get clogged. No telling what could happen. As the 2008 season gets underway and the new crop of drivers get used to these Star Monster race cars, Star decided to throw in a little bit of an extra challenge. They're switching from bias ply tires to the radial tires. Gary Rodriguez, series president. 300 man hours that went into getting the Mazda powered Lola on track today. John Doonan, after all the time spent at the racetrack, is this team mentally prepared for the race? Well, well Greg, Andy Pilgrim is starting third, and he's currently third in the championship, but he is the only driver to finish on the podium in each of the five races so far. Coming into today's race, his best finish here at Road America is seventh, but this is his favorite track, and with nearly 200 Remington guests today, the pressure is on. Two in a row for the number three car, but more importantly, this was your last test before going to Lamar. Are you guys pleased with the results as you head in? Well, down at the Drayson Barwell team, they did determine that there is some tire rubber stuck in the exhaust system and that's what was actually igniting on the car. So the car Peter Cunningham is on pole for his second straight race. It had been two years before he had a pole prior to Watkins Glen. But Peter, you have more mid-Ohio experience than anybody starting behind you. How are you going to keep him in your mirrors today? Miss Mosport last week and they did a tire test for Falcon down at Sebring Raceway. They also thought it'd be a great opportunity to test the car over bumps because the, this Detroit circuit is such a bumpy surface. Tim thought that they well, guys, one driver to keep an eye on is James Safronis. James is currently fifth in the championship, but a water pump failure just before qualifying didn't turn a lap. James has finished in the top ten in each race so far, so he'll be fighting through the pack today. A very happy Oliver Gavin and Olivier Beretta. You haven't won a race since St. Petersburg. Coming in, GM's headquarters. How special is this for you and the team today? Well, I spoke with Dirk Mueller earlier in the weekend, and he said he felt like that penalty was unwarranted. He had been warned, but he felt like it was just good, dirty, but clean racing. He said if he had the chance to do it this weekend and got into another one of those situations, he would be doing it again. Well, during their pit stop, everything was perfectly normal during the driver change up until the point of time where they had to close that door, bounce back open, the crew slammed it shut. As soon as Mika left, they told him over the radio, make sure the door shut, make sure the door shut. He cannot get it shut, so it looks like they are going to bring him into pit lane and see. After taking both driver and manufacturer titles in 2007, TriPoint Mazda looked to explode in 2008. Instead, the team began to implode with Randy Post walking away in the offseason and champion Jeff Altenberg defecting days before round two in Utah. Though not the start to the season they had hoped for, the boys in blue were down, but not out. And out of the final turn, Saney for the last time after having driven, really, 20 perfect laps. First win for the young rookie, first win of the season for the defending manufacturers, Mazda. First win of the season for the team. I just got to thank Mazda. I mean, I wouldn't be here without the ladder system. This is a dream come true for me. Though Saney was the first to be promoted through Mazda's ladder system, the idea of sticking with the make through the ranks is an old one. 
Touring car veteran Charles Espenlob was moved from Tyndall Motorsports to replace Randy Popes, and Jim Daniels was moved from MX-5 Cup to replace Jeff Altenberg. Ladder system or not, the TriPoint teammates draw experience from the same background. You know, I got two great teammates again, uh, you know, Jason Sadie and Jim Daniels. So kind of their MX-5 Miata guys. You know, my first first race I ever did was, was in Miata. I, you know, I kind of did that stuff back in the day. Basically, I've been a Miata and rotor head since uh, since almost since Mazda Speed started. And I won the championship in 06. Asked Jason's teammate, he got second. The uh, ladder system wasn't quite in place for 06. Opportunity wasn't there for him. So to be able to have the seat open up and for Mazda to, to step up and, and give him that chance, um, is, is great. Again, it just speaks volumes about Mazda. Staying within the Mazda family helps drivers by working with familiar faces. We're with each other all weekend, we share the track. If we share data, share knowledge. If I'm across the country racing in a different series and I got shock issues, we're emailing the data back and forth and analyzing over cell phones. You know, we're all trying to share information and just trying to make everybody faster on the team. So, you know, they may, you know, some people say, well, they're just stepping into this, but no, they, they've got the experience and, and, and the skill to do it. Charles has been helpful because he has data, you know, from from racing previous years and touring car series. I'm going to try to just get as many top 10 finishes as I can and try to try to get a top five and move from there. It's all good. It's a great rapport, and uh, you know what can I say? It's zoom, zoom.